All right, first off, Happy New Year. And what I wanna talk about here today is I want to create in the next few months is a 3D printing and a 3D CAD course for you guys. Um, so this would be very detailed. It'd walk you through how to 3D print something or actually you'd have to design it in CAD and then 3D print it. Or you don't have to design it in CAD. You can just simply 3D print something you find on Thingverse or wherever. Uh, you know, There's tons of websites with people that share their designs. Okay, so why, why create something like this? Well, three years ago, I got into 3D printing here at home, and each time I came out with a video where I kind of solved a problem with a 3D printed part or made tools or whatever, you guys have asked for the file or, hey, how'd you create that? Or, oh, that's pretty cool. So um, having those conversations over the past three years, I'm just, this is something I just want to, to create. I don't know if you guys know this or not, I probably mentioned it before, but I'm a mechanical engineer and have been for the past 20 years, so I have been 3D modeling in CAD for the past 20 years. That's what I do every day. I work in new product development and all I do is hammer on the keyboard and 3D model design stuff. And then usually when you have the design, we also have 3D printers at work, really nice 3D printers and we print the stuff and then we put it together and see if it'll work and that's how we iterate through the design process to achieve a pretty good solution before we go into you know production with you know metal parts or injection molded or whatever so 3D printing really speeds up the process okay so now 20 years ago i mean 3D CAD was pretty new i mean there was still people doing 2D stuff um, and 3D printing was new technology and it was very expensive. I mean, no one in their homes had it, right? Fast forward to now, 20 years later, I mean, 3D CAD software, you can get free software. 3D printers cost 200, 300 bucks. The one I have is like a little under $300. And then, so, so far all the software is free. The 3D printer is under 300 bucks. And then here is a spool of filament that loads into the 3D printer. This is 15 to $25, depending on what you buy, and you can print a ton of stuff. Uh, what is this, one pound? This is 2.2 pounds of filament, so you can print a ton of parts off of that, which equates to a part costing a dollar or two, or whatever, and you know, it's just super cheap, and it's there's tons of resources now available and it just makes a lot of sense to do it. I mean, it's a very cool thing to have in your home. I'm 3D printing all kinds of stuff, which I'll show you later in this video. Okay, so there's really two types of people that 3D print stuff. One is uh, a person who has no CAD experience and all they do is they get this 3D printer and then they go on a website like Thingverse or whatever and it, they just download the files and then print them. So you don't have to design anything, you don't have to model anything up, you just simply find something that you like and you 3D print it. Perfect example is my son, uh, when I bought this years ago, he he just started 3D printing helmets, Star Wars stuff and whatever, and then you know they were too big for the, the machine, so he would print parts of it and then glue it all together and paint it and sand it and all this stuff. So he really got into that, it was pretty cool to see him watch him do that because He's picking up a new skill, right? Then there's a guy like me who, yeah, sometimes I download stuff on Thingverse if it exists, but I design parts that don't exist and I need it to solve a problem. So that's where 3D printing really shines and that's where you need the 3D CAD skill to design these parts and then send them over to the 3D printer. All right, so if this is something you'd be interested in, there's a link below and you can sign up. And what signing up does is, first it tells me how many people are interested and whether I should even create this. I mean, if no one signs up, then I won't do it, right? But if a ton of you sign up, then, then it's a go, right? And then um, you can give me input. It'll tell you, hey, one thing you wanna learn on this course, fill it in here. And I just get feedback from you guys and I make sure I put in what you want. Also, it'll give you early access to the course. I probably won't open up to everyone. I probably wanna get some feedback from a small group of you. And then lastly, I will give discount codes to these initial people that signed up. So that link again is in the video description. Okay, so let me let me show you around the garage and in the house of things I have 3D printed and, and what 
problems I have solved and it really saves time and money when you think about it. And just think of how that can apply to your life and in your garage or whatever. And also, um, a quick thing to mention is if you know 3D CAD and you can design stuff, that's a pretty good career. So if you're looking for a career change, just consider, you know, this course isn't going to land you a job anywhere or anything, but, you know, look into local community colleges. They offer um, 3D CAD modeling and they off, offer like a drafting certificate or something, but if if you're looking for a career change, you can 3D model stuff for a company and do prints and whatnot, and the pay is pretty good. So just keep that in mind. Probably the biggest home project I have done 3D CAD-wise is this DIY wood vapor blaster. I modeled this whole thing in 3D CAD before I bought any materials or cut any wood or anything. And it took six months to a year on and off right but it took six months to a year to complete this 3d model and think everything through and figure it all out when i used all my prints and all my 3d modeling info to build this essentially i've had zero mistakes and or, or changes on the fly so as i'm building this i am just following everything i laid out in 3d cad and it worked out perfect all the screws and nuts were in the right place, correct lengths. Um, and one thing that I absolutely needed 3D CAD for is this these, this funnel down here. I got angle cuts, bevels on the, the funnel. And calculate. I don't know how you'd calculate that, but I was able to 3D CAD model it, and it provides you the angle that I needed to tip my saw at. And it came out perfect. I mean, the fit up was like perfect, okay? Um, and I'm not great with working, I'm not a wood guy, right? But anyway, it worked great. Um, and I laid out all my tubing, all my wiring. So I knew exactly how everything went together. And it just, it saved so much time. And it also gave me some ideas on how I can make it more compact. I mean, if you look at this thing, compared to other, how other people, other companies do it, um, I got the control box up here versus hanging out on the side. I got the door right here and a door right here. So it is as narrow as it can get. And I put all my closed loop stuff under here. So that was something that 3D CAD really helped me with. And, and I was able to make it really compact and still have all the features. So that is huge. Okay, so next up, and it's really why I bought my own 3D printer three years ago, is... I wanted to make the HTMR blast gun. Okay, so right here, this is the metal version, right? And this is the complete, the production unit, if you will. Um, but, you know, I had this idea to make a blast gun and I must have designed and 3D printed a dozen versions, do dozen iterations. Uh, what's cool is you can design something and, and depending on the complexity of the part, how big it is, it may take overnight to print. So I would design a gun during the day, print it overnight, and then I was able to test the next day. And then go, oh, you know, this isn't gonna work or I wanna make some tweaks. You make those tweaks and you print another version overnight. So every day you can um, touch up these ideas, right? And the best thing about 3D printing is, let's say it doesn't work, well, you just throw it out. It's like a dollar in material, right? And then you go print another. And the reason for that is if you were to make each version out of metal, it would take weeks and it would cost a lot to make a metal version every time you had a design change. And it also makes the production process a lot smoother. So if you have everything figured out with a physical 3D part and then you just make a print off of it, the suppliers can easily make that. I mean, this thing went into production with no issues, couple little tolerance issues here and there and whatnot, but generally speaking it went really smooth and that's that's how it should be you should get all the things ironed out cheaply the 3d printed parts and then boom you go to metal parts or whatever now you're probably wondering why not just use a 3d printed gun and you can but mine has broken several times sure you can beef it up or whatever and make it last um, and there's actually guys selling 3d printed guns for like 80 dollars which i think is crazy because 
they break. I know so because people have emailed me and said, hey, my 3D printed gun broke. I want to buy yours and, and so forth. So I've had those conversations with people. And with a 3D printed nozzle, you can't run aluminum oxide because I've tried and 50 thousandths goes in a matter of minutes in terms of diameter of the nozzle. So aluminum oxide will trash it in a heartbeat. So just a bit of info there. So that's another thing. I mean, you know, there are companies selling 3D printed parts like brackets for cars and this and that, and that's totally fine. You know, 3D printed parts can last um, in some applications. And in some, most applications, maybe it only last a few minutes and that's just what it is. But um, hey, it's awesome. And um, even the Helix uh, hydrocyclone I had in here just the other day, uh, that green thing, uh, for vapor blasting. That's a 3D printed part. Um, that guy Mike designed it and he's selling it. So he's selling his design. It's 3D printed. It works perfectly fine. It'll last and and so forth. Because I mean, going to the next step of getting molds make, made to make that, you're talking 10, 20 grand to, to make a mold for a injection molded plastic part like that. Just 3D print them, you know? Okay, right over here, I 3D printed some some mounts for, for things. So over here is my remote for my mini split. So this black part here is 3D printed. And you know, I could have easily drilled into the cinder block here and mounted it here, but I, di I didn't want to do that because it's, it's kind of hard to, to drill in here and this is right at the edge. Anyway, this was just so much easier. So I got a magnet in here and it attaches to here. And you know, I could put it over here, I could put it over here, I could even stick it over there and, and the remote can be close by. Uh, I did the same thing with my garage door opener. So see, same magnet, and then I just, you know, did this. So something like this takes me five minutes to design. It takes another five hours to print or whatever, and there it is, okay? It's a, it's a nice solution, but it's not permanent, you know? And I don't know if I want this here or whatever. So it's just cool to have that. Uh, something else that I 3D printed that you can't see here is this cabinet came with squishy blocks to space it off the wall and I needed a little more spacing to level out the cabinet so I made a square block at a certain distance and I glued it in here so I mean that's just a stupid example of what you can do okay another example is this power strip is mounted to my wall this right here this black thing is 3d printed I could have bent up a strap out of metal or whatever but it was just again five minutes to design something in CAD printed it while I watch some TV or whatever, and then it's it's fine. This thing is super strong. I can't move it whatsoever. So um, it worked out great. Okay, now I wanna show you some uh, assembly fixtures I have made to save time, which is awesome. Okay, so I got the <laughs> HTMR blast gun here, another example. Um, so here's the air jet and I need to put a piece of tubing on each of these air jets. Well, how do I cut this tubing squarely and how do I cut a bunch of them really fast? Well, um, what I've done is this is just a cutter that I bought, right? But now I 3D printed this black part and glued it on here and it has a stop for cutting the tubing. So I insert here, this is the exact length I need. Boom. So I can cut a bunch of these really fast, right? So there, I just cut four of them extremely fast, right? So that's one thing that is 3D printed. And I did drop this, it cracked. Well, guess what? I had the file, I just printed another one. It takes like two hours. So I just gotta be careful with that. All right, so next up is you see these four things, they're all the same. So let's just look at one of them. It's just a little assembly fixture. All right, so this is how it works. I drop the gun in here like that, or the body. I put an O-ring in there, which I don't have here, but that's not the point of this video. And then I drop in this part, right? And I start it a couple threads. So next, how do I run that down quickly? Well, I 3D printed a special socket for this, for this guy here, right? I just run that down. Then I finish it off manually, and then I come over here, and this hole is to hold it like this, right? So then I load this part, and then I load this part, 
And then I like buying tools, so you know I got a M12 ratchet. Okay, so I run that down. All right, and then you get a complete gun. It's not tightened up. This is a this is just to show you all my cool fixtures here. So that allows me to build these pretty quick. And I get four of these going, and I load them up, and I got a little assembly line here. Um, now I had previous designs of this nut, and you're probably wondering what's wrong with this. Well. I later came out with this nut here, which is for boron carbide, and it doesn't work. See that? So then I went back to the drawing board, and this nut works for both versions, the ceramic and the boron carbide. So these, I don't know why I'm hanging on to it, but anyway, that's that. So you can see that just a couple 3D printed parts has saved me hours of time. So that's freaking awesome. So, um, again, I told you I'm an engineer. Well, there's manufacturing engineers at my work that help the assembly line assemble stuff, and they make 3D printed pictures like crazy. So it holds certain components, and, you, you know, it's all to save time. So that's pretty cool. Okay, over here I had to design up a bracket that holds a flex fuel sensor for my Chevelle. It's located under the hood, and I designed it such that uh, it takes brass threaded inserts and it's been on the car for over a year and a half and it does exactly what I need it to. Just a simple bracket to hold a sensor and it has a clean look. Next up is I designed and 3D printed this bracket to hold a fuse relay box also under the hood of the Chevelle and it just works perfect. Okay, a couple more examples. Remember when I did the DIY coping tool to fab up some pipes for uh, fabricating exhaust? Or how about the pie cuts? to figure out how the uh, tubing is gonna run. Or just the LS rear and front seals, uh, those tools alone are $50, well I 3D printed them for 50 cents, so that's another example. Um, anyway, I think this would be a really cool course and also what I'd like to do is put a library in there. So basically, I'll show you how to design something um, in 3D CAD and then I'll leave that part there and then you can print it and we can just build this library of cool stuff that you can use. And um, we can also set up a private Facebook group uh, for members and we can discuss designs and whatnot. And um, I kind of did a, a private Facebook group for the DIY Vapor Blaster and that's pretty cool to interact with all of you guys. So um, I think this would be awesome to create. If you're interested, the sign up link is below. That's all I got for this video.